Before we get into our sermon this morning, there's two things I want to bring to your attention. Number one, I want you to keep the family of Mandela Williams in your prayers. Um, they're, they're battling a difficult arena, uh, not just because of her passing, but a lot of her brothers and sisters are in the nursing home and they cannot be at the funeral today. Some of her family has COVID and they cannot be at the funeral today. And I want you to keep them in mind because they've made a request of us and I'm going to challenge you right now. The book of James says, don't speak your faith, but let your work show your faith. So let's see what we can do. They've asked some people if they can sing to be there at 1 p.m. at Giles Memory Garden. So if you can sing this morning, which is how many of us? All of us. That was a re redundant question, wasn't it? So if you, can, if you can be a part of encouraging that family, 1 p.m. at Giles Memory Gardens, uh, keep that in your minds. Also, it was mentioned in the announcements that we're going to have an Invite a Friend Sunday. That's next Sunday. We started this last year, and well, 2020 happened. So we're rebooting that this year. So here's what we want you to do. One of two things. Either A, bring somebody with you, or B, bring somebody with you. Spend time this week finding somebody that you would like to bring with you and just bring. We're going to have a simple sermon. It will be very simple. It will be very first principled. But that will give you an opportunity to help someone and to encourage someone in this life. So be a part of that. I hope you will be. We'll do that every month and we'll make sure that it's in the bulletin in advance so you'll know when those are coming up. Now, this morning, we're going to do something that's unusual. We're going to have the 10 minute sermon. Now, what that means is in 10 minutes, we're done. Now, some of y'all don't believe that. I don't know why. But give me 10 minutes. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm requesting of you today. Inside of this room is 10 minutes. And if you don't believe me, I'll do one even better. Here we go. 10 minutes. Now, here's what I want us to do. It's threefold. It's real simple. It's real easy. What I want us to do this morning is I want us to follow Jesus. Well, that seems pretty easy, isn't it? Well, that's much more complicated than it seems, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Number two, I want us to obey Jesus, and that's where we're going to look at our scripture reading from this morning, and I want us to see something. There are three words in Titus 3.14 that I want you and I to see, and then what I want us to do is to live Jesus. And, and when we get to that point, I've got two men that are going to help us. Um, the reason this is a 10-minute sermon is, you know those commercials where, where they're going through, they're going through, and then someone says, but wait, there's more. There's going to be more. And I've got two men that are going to help me and help you with the more. And I'll, I'll explain that when we get there. Let's begin by going to the book of Matthew. And I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 7. I want you to see how Matthew chapter 7 ends. It starts with, judge not... Oh, doesn't the world know Matthew chapter 7? Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged. Go to the end of that chapter. It's talking about Jesus, Jesus who is speaking, Jesus who said, Matthew 7, 1. Matthew 7, 28 and 29, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. I want you to see something about Jesus. Jesus was not like you, and Jesus was not like me, because Jesus had authority. Jesus had authority. So you and I can know when Jesus said something, it carried weight. It meant something. It, it had an impact. It had an eternal change in what he was saying. And Jesus has just spent an entire 27 verses teaching a group of people not to profane holy things and to be the servants of God. And isn't that who we're supposed to be? And this was the reaction of the people. Not, not religious leaders, not politicians, uh, not public figures. The people were astonished. You know what that word means, astonished? It set them back because of what Jesus was doing. And here's the truth. Jesus is always contradictory to the ways of this world. 
It's always been that way and always will be. Jesus had the authority. And that brings us to the opportunity. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 8. We're going to roll through 12 verses rather rapidly. We've got plenty of time. Don't worry. Time is on our side today. Matthew chapter 8. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 1. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now notice verse 4. And Jesus said unto him, See that thou tell no man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. It was Jesus who had been teaching. I love this scene. A leper comes to Jesus. That was a skin disease that's cured by some small tablets or capsules today. Very simple in our day that we live in. But in the day we're reading about where Jesus is walking the face of the earth, it was a system of isolation. Why? Because you could not spread it to anyone else. And therefore, when you met people, you had to proclaim that you were unclean. As a matter of fact, the law of Moses talks about this. You can look at verse 4 in Matthew chapter 8 and go back to Leviticus 13, 2 and Leviticus 14, verse 12 that talks about how when one who is now clean of leprosy must show himself before the priest before he can enter back into society. So you have a man who's been quarantined. And he asks Jesus to heal him. And Jesus does, and he tells him to go see those and to offer that which the law requires. I want you to see something, number one. In the opportunity. Jesus followed the law of which he was under. Religiously, he was under the law of Moses, and Jesus respected the law of Moses. Point number one for us, respect the law of Christ. It's what you live under. It's what I live under. If Jesus could respect the law of Moses, we can respect the law of Christ. So he says, go do what the law says. And then verse five enters. It's almost back to back for Jesus. It's fast paced. It's happening. Jesus entered into Capernaum, and there came a centurion beseeching him. He was a military man, a captain of captains. He was a man of authority. And his servant was sick. Verse 6, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. He held nothing back. I'm sure that he used his military might to use every resource available that he had for his servant, but nothing helped him. I'm sure he reached out to every contact that he had, but nothing could help them. But this centurion knew about this man named Jesus. And as soon as Jesus entered into his city, he goes to Jesus and says, can you help? He held nothing back. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. What a marvelous thing of Jesus to say. But look at what happens, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should be under my roof, but speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. Jesus is about to be impressed. You know that you've studied this before. I've not seen so great a faith. No, not in Israel. Now I want you to go down to verse 11 because you need to see something. Jesus, in responding to this, says, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. what this book is about it's about people with problems physical and spiritual guess what that's not changing our world there are people with physical problems right now there are people with spiritual problems right now and jesus tells them there are people who can come they can come from the east and the west as far as the sun rises and sets and that's everywhere And they can come into this kingdom where Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are and they can rest in that kingdom. Don't you see the beauty of Scripture? Don't you see what's taking place in this idea? If we follow Jesus, folks, we will have a place to rest from the troubles of this world. So here's point number one. Follow Jesus. Here's point number two. Obey Jesus. It's Titus 3, verse 14. It's very simple. It's very specific. And let ours. Paul is writing to Titus. Paul and Titus, members of the church. You're members of the church. And let ours. Who's he talking about? Church people. Church members. You and I, Christians. And let ours learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. That they may not be unfruitful. I want you to see two words in 
Titus 3, 14. Number one, ours. That's us. And let us learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not, number word, word number two, unfruitful. That means that they aren't just pew sitters. Don't be a pew sitter. I know right now you're sitting in a pew, okay? But I hope you understand what I'm saying. Don't be a pew sitter. Don't just look at at Christianity as something that you do on Sunday and Wednesday, but look at Christianity as your life because what we've got to do is we've got to understand that it's our responsibility to what? Obey our Lord. Now, here's where we've got to do something together. We're going to do this, and, and I've got two guys that are going to help me do this. Uh, Phil and, and Caleb are going to pass something out right now. Phil's going to handle this side, and, and Caleb's going to handle this side. If you'll go ahead and do that. I want you to understand something, and, and as they're passing this out, uh, we've got time. There's going to be one given to every family, one given to every family, and I'll explain what this means. What I want you to do is, is look around. You, you can look around. I want you to look in the back. I want you to look in the front. I want you to look to your right. I want you to look to your left. Just think about what you see. Just think about what you see. Does anybody see anything? Well, there's a couple things we see. We see people. We see people, don't we? We see people. But we also see pews. Now, what may happen this morning, I'm going to explain something to you. They're passing you out a handout. And what I want you to do with this, and, and there may not be enough of them to go around, and that's, that's by design. What we've done is since March of 2020, things have been different, haven't they? Nobody seems to agree with me on that. Things have been different, haven't they? Look around. Are things different? Okay. Things are different. What we've done is we've taken all the members of East Hill and laid them out in a spreadsheet. And we've put on a list every home that's not been here since March. You're getting that list this morning. I'm asking you to do one thing. Send two cards. Send two cards. Here's what you're going to do in your cards. You're not going to criticize. You're not going to complain. You're not going to tell people that they're wrong. You're not going to tell people that they're right. We miss you. That's all you're doing this morning, is you're telling people that you look around and see that aren't here, we miss you. You know why it's a 10-minute sermon? Because there's more. If we can recognize in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, that Jesus says all of those that come, that come to sit down in this kingdom, will have a place in that kingdom, we need to take that seriously. Send a card. That's all I'm asking you to do. Send two cards. I don't think any person in this room is going to say that that's something you can't do. Because I know every person in this room can do this. And thus, in 10 minutes, we've concluded our time. Here's what I'm trying to get us to do. I'm trying to get us to recognize that there's so much more to Christianity than just sitting in a pew. There's so much more to Christianity than just sitting in a pew. And where we've got to start is right here in our own house. Send a card. That's all I'm asking you to do. It's real simple. Send a card. That's all we've done in 10 minutes. But I know this, it's going to take more than 10 minutes, isn't it? To send a card. You know, you and I have been blessed to be in this place for a number of days in our lives, church buildings and a number of other places in our lives. We've sung songs together. We've prayed together. We've seen people obey the gospel together. We've studied together. But let's help one another. Let's encourage one another. 
Let's be the Christians that follow Jesus. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to become a Christian. The opportunity is available for you. Maybe it's you. I, I can't judge that for you. You're going to have to determine that. But I know this, Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can do that, can't you? You, you? you can look at God's word and you can determine whether you need to become a Christian or not. And guess what? If there's sin in your life, you need to become a Christian if you're not. Because only inside of Christ can you have your sins removed. 1 John 1, 1 through 10. Acts 2, 38. 1 Peter 3, 21. Galatians chapter 1, 2, and 3. Do you need to become a Christian this morning? The time is here. Are, are you a Christian this morning? As I look out and see a, a number of people who have been Christians most of their lives. How's your life this morning? Is there sin in your life? Is there hate in your heart? Are there worries in your life? Maybe it's time that we as God's people learn that we've got to respond to God just as much as everybody else. Do you need the prayers of the church? What a great time it would be to have the prayers of the church, isn't it? Because the church is what? Assembled. You see, we've spent 10 minutes. And now we have something to do. And now we have a time to respond. Bryce has picked out an invitation song for us. Let's sing that song and let's respond. Let's sing and stand accordingly.